Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to my very, very messy working table. But you know what? I'm in a hurry today. I need to finish these androbiums today. Maybe take care of some catlias as well. I need to prepare another video for the other channel. I need to work on the terrace as well. There's a whole lot going on. A little mess. You know, it's implied. Gardeners are not necessarily tidy people. Anyway, let's concentrate on the subject at hand today. We are going to repot the Dendrobium phalaenopsis types or Vigibum types into the wick watering system because they dry out within a day on the terrace. And as I showed you in my previous video, they do so great outside. They grow so vigorous. They have flower spikes. They're really, really nice looking, but they break my back with the watering. So I already repotted a few you, but I thought I could take you along just so you see what materials I opted for and just to show you how simple it actually is address a few things and yeah maybe this will inspire you as well so in the end semi hydro actually has a very very tiny reservoir I want to switch to a bigger reservoir and the way to do so I found that works with Leka at least 90% is the wick so the principle is simple I'm just trying to find a pot which can fit into another pot a decorative pot without drainage holes and actually create the reservoir on the bottom if you look from this point of view you can see there is a difference in height in between these two pots that difference will actually be the reservoir because this pot inside has a little bit of a lip and rests on the top of the decorative pot so that's the whole science of things it's nothing complicated and to make sure that water is indeed wicked in the main pot I will install an actually thread which wicks water very very well it's a microfiber thread because at some point the reservoir will be lower than the pot you will not touch the pot so water cannot actually get inside the like a pot other than evaporation which doesn't really work all that great so we do need a wick that's the principle of things and i want to repot my dendrobium phalaenopsis which are big big orchids therefore i have two big pots we're gonna start this by placing the wick and i like to place it across the bottom of my pot so I'll put it in through one of the drainage holes and take it out through the opposite drainage hole and voila we have quite a big surface area that will deliver water I like to actually make it a little bit loose some of you guys suggested to make the wick stand up and practically have even more surface you can do that I just don't want to hassle it's hard to pot big big orchids that already have a formed root ball, as you will see, and maintain the wick up as I put the, no, I, I don't wanna bother with that. If you can't do that, you can do it, obviously. It doesn't hurt anything. The more the wick comes in contact with the medium, the better. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna get my orchid so you see how easy and fast it is to repot them. And the orchid, I think this one is in spike, it will not even feel it. So that's my orchid. You can see how big he is. This is the blue happiness. Can you believe it? He was in such poor condition when I purchased this guy. And look at him today. Look how vigorous these growths are. I just love them. We're also gonna do some maintenance on the guy. But before, I really wanna put him in this pot. So you can see it's quite of an upgrade here, but as you will see the root system, it's massive on these orchids. So first of all, let's remove the stakes. On some of these orchids, I couldn't even squeeze the pot. That's how root bound they were. Oh, this guy is a breeze. Okay, so the root system is not really as massive as others, but it's quite substantial. I don't even want to bother the root system. I just want to check. Okay, the root is alive. I think the root system is in pretty good condition, so I'm just not gonna touch it. So next, I'm just simply going to rest the entire root ball in the new pot and as you can see the level is actually okay that's why I didn't put any more leka at the bottom I would have raised the level way too much and then just pour in with the existing leka Okay, you don't see what happened, but that cane right there, because it's leaning over, just managed to bump over some other pots. We shall cut that cane today, because it does more harm than good, but first we're gonna talk about it. Alrighty, so my orchid is potted. I had to add just a little bit of new leka because this was a bigger pot, and pretty much I'm done with the repotting. However, as I was saying, I want to cut this cane, because, well, let me just show you what happened twice already. 
and if you can imagine I had to deal with it like this for the past almost two years because imagine that tower of pots was an orchid oh yes this guy made so many orchids fall including himself that I'm just over it I have been waiting for this day for two years already but first we need to talk about it because it's never a good idea to go ahead and cut uh, functional canes without having the faintest idea of what it is we're doing. So old pseudobulbs on orchids, even though they might not look pretty anymore and they might not bloom, they do play a very important role. They store energy, nutrients, moisture, they help the new growth. Overall, it's not a good idea to cut them because they do help the orchid. However, in a few instances, it is actually a very good idea to cut them. First of all, if they're dried and dead. Obviously, if they're not alive anymore, they cannot store energy and help the orchid. Second, if they're rotting, because they can spread disease throughout the plant. And three, if they just get on your nerves, like this one. But when we cut canes simply because of aesthetics or because they're a nuisance, we need to do so very wisely. We need to figure out if the cane is still vital to the orchid. So as I was saying, I have this orchid for almost two years already and I did not cut this cane up until now. Why did I do that? Well, because at the time it was the main cane of the orchid. And ever since I purchased it, it grew this tiny little thing right here and then this thing, which is is a little bit bigger and now this is the newest cane which is very 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 tall so in the beginning this was the mother cane the point where all growth started because this orchid has two directions of growth this nuisance of a cane produced two tiny little canes that produced the next growths on the orchid obviously I could not cut it but two years after what do we see here we have this little cane as a back bulb this one as a back bulb and a very very nice looking new growth that is still in growth mode it is producing roots the orchid overall has a very good root system not only that we do have another direction of growth even though it is a different direction it still communicates and helps the other direction pretty much the entire orchid works together right now this is disposable right now it was not disposable two years ago it was crucial but now it became disposable, therefore, to spare some orchids in my collection, to spare space and to spare him because I bumped into him so many times, we need to cut that pseudobulb. So how I'll do things is sterilize my pair of pruners, which I already did with alcohol and a flame. And then I'm going to cut it not at the base, but somewhere here. I'm just gonna leave about three centimeters of this cane. And as you can see, I made a very clean cut. If you go very low, there is a chance of infection because it's very close to the medium. If you go too high, well, not sure if you resolved anything. So you need to find a sort of middle ground. Now this will be an open wound, which is pretty considerable. What I will do is put some cinnamon because there will not be water here. So the cinnamon will act, it will stay dry. You can also put wax or hot glue. I actually did this with another dendrobium and I put hot glue and everything went perfect. It's sealed completely and it's actually waterproof as well. In the industry, nurseries put hot wax and then it seals just like hot glue, but I don't really have hot wax at hand. So we're just gonna have to do with this. Now, you might ask yourself, couldn't I just pin it? No, because this is an old pseudobulb. It's not flexible anymore. Do you see this? If I would try to straighten it, I would have broken it. See, it's already broken here. Sorry, breaking. On the other hand, this cane, you can see it's not curved, it's straight. So when canes are straight, I can definitely push them closer to the orchid. But with canes that are just so awkwardly crooked, I think it's better to just cut them, call it a day, and it's gonna be much better for the orchid herself because is just not gonna be a hazard for all the other orchids or for herself. But first, when you cut fully functional back bulbs, make sure they're not indispensable for the orchid, like this guy was two years ago. So that's the only concern, and you might know me, I always tell you never to cut the older canes, but there you go, if they actually become a nuisance, you can absolutely do so if you know what you're doing. Now I wanted to show you this cane actually has a flower spike developing yay 
and I can assure you the flower spike will continue to develop because the root system was not affected at all. And this is how I am actually able to repot these orchids and switch the systems. Whenever you're dealing with inorganic that does not change structure, you can absolutely do this and the orchid won't even feel it. So that's what I'm doing right now with the orchids that are still outside and are giving me headaches with the watering system. Some of you already told me that you really want to try it out because you do have issues with watering as well. And if you do, uh, remember, always try out with one or two. See how things go, if you like it, if it works. And in the end, I really hope it will make your life easier. And I actually totally forgot to show you what the final step is. It's okay, I'm gonna insert this in the video. Just don't mind the weird sequence of events. So afterwards, I'm just going to place my pot in the mask and I'm actually going to soak the pot and give it a good flush. This is tap water. I'm not using osmosis water to do so because I would be wasting two liters and a half of osmosis water. No, thank you. The reason why I do this is because I want to remove some of the debris, which you will see, I will show you. Alrighty, so orchids do produce debris because inevitably some orchids will die off, the velamen will start to decompose, but the decomposition is not really all that fast. So what happens is, in organic media such as bark and even sphagnum moss, it is close to impossible to dislodge that velamen and just make it fall off the drainage holes because there aren't many, many spaces, many air pockets in between the pieces of bark and sphagnum moss, I'm not even gonna talk about it, it's impossible. So that debris will stay there, will decompose and it will speed up the decomposition of our medium. But look at this doesn't happen. The spaces, the air gaps will remain there indefinitely until maybe roots start to grow in between them, but that doesn't happen all that fast. <laughs> this guy needs a while. He's been in Lekka for a few months. I repotted him this spring actually and you saw that even though there were quite a few roots, there weren't as many as to fill up all of the pockets. So when you have the pockets, obviously the debris will just fall if you do a flush by soaking. So just to show you what I mean, let's lift this orchid up. Ta-da! Do you see what's in here? You don't. <laughs> Sorry about that. It is full of debris. That's absolutely normal. Orchids do leave debris. Now I can just dump this water and put osmosis water in the reservoir and just place the orchid back. So here is a level of osmosis water. I tried to maintain the level that the pot would naturally make, uh, but if the water touches the bottom of this pot, there's no problem really. It's just like semi-hydro, isn't it? So that's okay. And there we have it. This orchid is ready to be placed outside. The only thing that I still wanna do is just tie this pseudobulb a little closer to the plant and that's it and i hope you've enjoyed this video and you know the drill if you did give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos tutorials q a's and all sorts of random stuff of the sorts and if you like youtube to notify you whenever i upload a new video just turn on notifications for my channel and hopefully youtube will do so so with that said i'll see you guys next time bye